San Francisco. How we doing, y'all? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, during my day job, I am a school teacher, <gasps> which means that I don't want to be a father anymore, okay, y'all? <laughs> yeah, I don't like being around little kids. This shit sucks for me, right? I teach a third grade, so the kids are around like eight or nine years old. And they're at that age where like all their teeth are starting to fall out. <laughs> so it kind of feels like I'm teaching a classroom full of like little meth heads or something. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. I except for kids, drugs are sugar, right? Like, did you know that if you give a kid a pack of fruit snacks, they can steal a catalytic converter all by themselves. <laughs> no help necessary. They're like, yo, I can flip this shit for some Harry Bow right now. <laughs> Yeah, the kids I teach, man. They're, they're also at that age where they like to ask me stupid ass hypothetical questions all the time. Other day a student comes up to me, he's like, hey, Mr. M. He's like, would you rather be rich with no friends or homeless, but really cool? <laughs> I was like, ooh, this doesn't seem like a real one-to-one -one here, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I guess the first, because I'm basically the second one already, you know? <laughs> You ever have a kid be like brutally honest, right? Cause they don't know to lie, but it's like brutal, the shit hurts. I was playing with me the other day, first grader comes up. He's like, hey, Mr. M, how old are you? I was like, oh, I'm 29 years old. And then he goes, oof, and walks the fuck away. <laughs> I've never felt such disrespect in my life before. That motherfucker basically did a drive by on my self esteem real quick. <laughs> fuck that little bastard. I'm gonna confiscate his Pokemon cards, okay? <laughs> Also, when kids are that young, they're all snitches. They're all snitches, every single one of them. Little kid Bodie, he's like, um, Mr. M, um, did you know that Huxley has Pokemon cards at school and he's not supposed to have them? And I was like, oh, thank you, Bodie. Uh, did you know that in these streets, <laughs> you can get beat up for saying some shit like that? <laughs> now, what did I tell you last time? He's like, snitches get stitches. <laughs> I remember one time I was going over a lesson and we were talking about dream jobs in the class, the kids, right? And like, remember when you were a kid what your dream job was gonna be? Every single kid's dream job is fucking unrealistic as shit, all right? Cause seriously, man, I remember one time this kid, he stood up, he was like, Mr. M, I'm gonna be the president. And I was like, ooh, I don't know, buddy. Uh, I watched you eat a glue stick last week. <laughs> I don't know if that's really in the cards for you. <laughs> but then again, you start to like look at the last two presidents that we've gotten, and I'm like, yeah, this kid has a shot at it for sure. <laughs> because I don't know why, but something tells me that Biden is a big fan of Elmer's, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this new generation of kids so much, man. I love teaching them, because these kids are so hip, man. They're tapped in, all right? Because these kids, they got TikTok and Adderall and shit, right? Because <laughs> here's the thing, this new generation of kids, they're mean, but woke. They're mean, but woke, okay? I'll give you an example. One time, a group of kids were standing around talking about video games. One kid goes, man, I can't wait to go home and play with my homies. Another kid in the back goes, yo, you sound hella gay, <laughs> but I support you. <laughs> yeah, he did something I didn't even know you could do. I didn't know that you could be a bully and an ally all in the same <laughs> sentence. This motherfucker united two different sides. I was like, he might actually be the president one day. <laughs> Yeah, the school I teach at, I teach at a uh, private Catholic school out here. Uh, the tuition at the school is $40,000 a year, which is fucking crazy, because I know what I'm teaching them, and it's maybe worth $12. <laughs> like, maybe. <laughs> But basically what I'm trying to say is that all the kids I teach, they're like super well off and like really privileged and you know, like white or whatever. And so, uh, <laughs> so they do the thing that all little white kids like to do at some point in their life do, which is they ask if they can touch my hair, <laughs> which that one's always been weird to me because as a black person, I have never had the desire to touch a white person's hair before. <laughs> like I've pet a corgi, I think I can kind of get it at that point, right? <laughs> But yeah, man, these kids, they're getting picked up in like Maseratis and Teslas and shit every day. You know, the other day, a kid was wearing a pair of $1,200 Gucci shoes to school, and he was just playing soccer in it. Like, have you ever seen somebody play soccer with your half of the rent before? <laughs> yeah, shit doesn't feel good, y'all. <laughs> I've never wanted to rob a kid more in my life. <laughs> Completely unrelated news, uh, I don't work at the school anymore. <laughs> But we made rent, so I guess we're okay. <laughs> 
It's so weird being around so many rich kids, man, because they say stuff to you that they think is normal, and it's not normal, like, at all. I'll give you an example. Pretty recently, I went to Hawaii for the very first time. Before my trip, I was so excited. I was reading my little travel guide in the halls. A little second grader sees me. He's like, Mr. M, you're going to Hawaii? I'm like, yeah, buddy. It's my very first time. I'm super excited. And then he goes, I've been seven times. <laughs> and I was like, dude, what the fuck? Weren't you like a zygote like five years ago? How does this make any sense? Do you know how fucked up it is to get travel recommendations from a child? <laughs> he was like, oh, you really have to go to the Lego store on the big island. It's really cool. <laughs> and I was like, hey, buddy, I'm trying to see brown titties shaking in my face. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you have to go to Honolulu for that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I, I'm really built for kids. I don't think I want to have them myself particularly, but I do like my family. I love my family to death. My, my, like my family, they're all like from the South, right? They're black. So they're a little more old school, like old minded. Like I just got this new tattoo. I showed my mom, she freaked out. She's like, boy, why would you put that on your body? What would your grandma think? And I hate when people assume that the elderly are feeble and can't take shit, right? <laughs> like my grandma lived through MLK's assassination and Jim Crow. I don't think that Scooby-Doo smoking a blunt is gonna phase her. <laughs> She's not gonna see my tattoo and be like, this isn't what I marched for, you know? <laughs> I actually just got back from a family reunion. Family reunions are weird as shit, man. Because there's all these people that know you, but you don't really know them. They say really weird shit to you. Like the weirdest one is like, oh my God, I remember back when I used to change your diapers. <laughs> like how the fuck is somebody supposed to respond to that? <laughs> what am I supposed to be like? Hey, uh, want to change another one for old time's sake? Come on! <laughs> yeah, my grandpa, he's getting really old now. Like, I, I have to step up, you know, I have to help him out and stuff, you know, take care of him. I have to change his diapers. <laughs> I saw my grandfather's penis for the very first time recently. It's a very weird experience seeing your grandpa's penis for the first time. Especially when it's bigger than yours, too, right? <laughs> I'm like, come on, bro. All I got was your bad hips and none of those good dick genetics, like, for real? <laughs> I don't know, it was weird. I, I felt like a weird sense of pride for a moment the first time I saw it, because I was like, man, this is the dick that marched with Dr. King, you know? <laughs> I remember one time I was talking to my grandma. I asked her, my grandma, what's the key? What's the key, the number one key to a successful relationship? And she said, baby, you gotta communicate. She said, communication is key. That's the number one thing. And I was like, I think that that big ass dick had a little bit to do with it. <laughs> Maybe that's why my grandma hobbles around in her old age now. You know? <laughs> She's getting diabolical back shots from grandpappy. <laughs> my dad is a weird dude, too. My dad, he's a very like old school, like classic manly man, right? Like he's not really in touch with emotions. I've always been more emotional. So when I was a kid, if I was crying, my dad would be like, you gotta stop crying, son. You gotta be strong like a man. Stop crying like a little pussy. But like I said, my dad is like a classic, like old school dude. Like, like if, to paint a picture, he like looks like a brick and gets horny at Home Depot. If you know what that man looks like. Like his two strongest emotions are just like anger and heartburn. You know, he's like a fucking real man. Sometimes I try to talk to him about his lack of emotions and he gets really defensive. He'll be like, what are you talking about? I don't show any emotions. I've cried in front of you before. And I'm like, yeah, but that's when the Warriors won the championship? <laughs> I don't think that fucking counts, bro. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm being unfair to my dad because he does show emotions, but he does like an old school dude. So it's only when he's drunk, right? Because that's how old school dudes do it. They get drunk, then they start showing all their emotions. And it's all weird and awkward because they don't have any practice, right? <laughs> like, for instance, we'll be sitting there drinking. Then out of nowhere, my dad will be like, you know, I don't think your mother ever really loved me. <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, dad. You kind of sound like a real pussy right now. Stop crying, old man. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, y'all, actually, I didn't drink at all. I didn't have a single drink of alcohol my whole life until the pandemic happened. Because, you know, we were all trapped inside by ourselves. And I was just sitting there like, man, I am lonely and sad. And then my housemate was like, here, drink this. And then I was like, man, I am horny and sad. <laughs> it's crazy how much of an effect alcohol has on you, right? It's like the only drink that changes you as a person, changes your personality. Only drink that does that. Like, I'm never having my morning coffee, and I'm just like you know what, I could probably beat every nigga's ass in this Starbucks right now. <laughs> like, I'm never laying in bed having my sleepy time tea being like, I should probably call my ex, she wants to hear from me right now, right? <laughs> 
All right, we're going to switch it up, okay? We're going to do some racial jokes here. Uh, I understand that you guys are very Caucasian. It's going to be okay, I promise, all right? <laughs> Black people weren't allowed on the Titanic, which we really dodged a bullet with that one, right? <laughs> Yeah, see, sometimes racism isn't all that bad. Sometimes it saves a life or two. But now that I know that information, it kind of changes the whole story for me. Because before it was this great tragedy, now it's just a story of how an iceberg became a civil rights leader, you know? <laughs> yeah, that iceberg saw that boat full of races like, nah, dude, not today. Black Lives Matter. Pow! <laughs> Here's another real fun piece of history for you guys. You guys know that the greatest serial killer in American history is actually a black man? This is true. His name is Samuel Little. He killed 93 people over the course of 40 years. The FBI calls him the most prolific serial killer in American history. Now, while that is fucked up, that's also black excellence, baby, right? Because <laughs> what is black excellence if not when a black man enters a normally white male dominated arena <laughs> and then proceeds to destroy every previous record set? <laughs> yeah, this dude is the Will Chamberlain Tiger Woods <laughs> of terrible black people. We got to celebrate him, okay? Because a win is a win. Representation matters, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out of here with this last one. Um, I have a white girlfriend. Uh, my girlfriend, she's white and sex positive. I remember she was telling me about this podcast she was listening to. She was like, hey, I heard on this podcast that if you hum while you're going down on me, it adds extra vibrations and feels really good. Do you want to try it? And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing, I also like fucking with my girlfriend a little bit. So when I went down there, I just started humming a Negro spiritual into her pussy. <laughs> I was like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Masses got me working so hard. <laughs> and she came too, you guys, she came. <laughs> yeah, she came so hard she let me sleep inside the house. So <laughs> yeah, graduated from a field munch to a house munch. What's up, y'all? <laughs> All right, I made you guys uncomfortable, but I understand. That's all right. I like white people. You guys are fun, man. I like my white friends. I talk shit about white people sometimes on stage, but I love my white friends, man. They teach me really cool things. Like, I got taken camping for the very first time by a group of my white friends because white people love the elements, y'all. They love that shit. Only a white person will look you dead in the eyes and be like, yo, dude, this weekend, you trying to go out into the woods and sleep in a Ziploc bag? No. <laughs> No, niggas don't fuck with the woods like that. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to go out to the woods and cosplay as a runaway slave for the weekend. That just sounds terrible to me, yo. You know, last time I went camping, it told me my favorite word in the world. You guys want to know what that is? Amenities, okay? I love amenities like a motherfucker. Wi-Fi threat count showers. That's my shit, dog. Yeah, I got taken on this camper trip by my homeboy, Kyler, so you know he's white, right? And... <laughs> While we were going out there, he was like, oh, just to let you know, there's no bear activity in the woods. And I was like, well, this seems like a fucking easy way for us to die. Why are we doing this? And he's like, no, it's okay, bro. I've done this a million times. It's totally fine. So we go out there, we start setting up camp. And while we're setting up camp, my buddy starts tying all of our food up into a tree. And I was like, yo, why are you doing this right now? And he's like, oh, that's just in case a bear comes. The bear will go for the food, and then that gives us time to escape. <laughs> And I was like, yo, is our best defense against a bear attack a fucking pinata? Like, really? <laughs> All right, you guys, this was my time. I'm Marcus Howard. Please give it up for me. Tiny pony.